All right, it is time to talk about VIC-1212, probably better known as the Commodore VIC-20 Programmer's Aid cartridge. So what is the Programmer's 8 cartridge? Well, it's a cartridge for your Commodore VIC-20 that adds a number of new commands to BASIC. It's kind of similar to the Super Expander, but at the same time not really. The Super Expander added extra RAM, as well as a bunch of commands for uh, graphics and sound. The commands in the Programmer's 8 cartridge, they aren't really meant to be used in programs, they're really just meant to be used to help you make programs. And unlike the Super Expander, Programs that you write using the Programmer's Aid cartridge can then be run on a computer without the Programmer's Aid cartridge. Okay, so I have the Programmer's Aid cartridge inserted into the back of the VIC-20. And let's power it on. And uh, I'm not going to do a direct capture for this video because I figured for this video it would be nice to be able to see like the keyboards and the keystrokes I'm making for some of the keyboard shortcuts I'm going to show you in a bit. And we turn on the VIC-20, nothing's different, we can't really use any of the new commands. We have to type SYS28681, I almost forgot it there, and it'll say Programmer's Aid, and it is now active. And they, basically what this cartridge does, as I mentioned earlier, is it gives you a bunch of uh, new commands and stuff to help you program. So, one of those first things is there are several uh, shortcuts mapped to the function keys. So, like F1 is list, so no program, F2 is run, F5 input, and we can actually change these by using the key command. So F1 is mapped to list by default, but let's say we want to map it to like print. So, we can go key 1, basically means the F1 key, comma, and then quotation marks and then print. So now when we press the F1 key, it'll automatically put the print on the screen. We can put whatever text we want in here. I can go like key three comma hello. Now every time I press F3, it says hello. So that's quite handy. Uh, this next command I'm gonna show you is auto line numbering. So we can go, uh, we can just type auto A-U-T-O. And then let's just do 10 because we want to increment by 10. There we go, it gives us a 10, so we'll go 10, print, and then it automatically will give us the next line number, so it'll automatically put a 20 there for us, and it gives us a 30, we press enter again, and it gets us out of that. So let's say we want to change hello world here to uh, something else. Uh, we can just cursor up and edit it, or we can use the new change command. So we're going to go change, hello world, and then in quotations, then comma, btm86, and it should change it to that, but I don't know why it has that D there. That could be a bit of a bug in this cartridge, I'm not sure. And this will work if, if I had like multiple occurrences of the string too. So if I had like print hello world twice in the program, it will replace both. Next one is delete, and this is pretty self-explanatory. We just go delete, and then we just want to delete line 20, so delete 20, list, and it gets rid of that line. Dump is a pretty cool command. So I just set some random variables. Now let's type dump, and it'll display all the variables and the value that they are currently set to. So that can be pretty handy for like debugging and whatnot which is what most of these commands are for. So let's say we want to find a string in our program. Well, we can just use the find command. So let's go find, and then there we go. Although there is only one line, so, but that can be handy if you've got a really big program and you're trying to find you know, what line is printing that one string out. So for this next program, I'm gonna need to intentionally create an error. And I just created a syntax error prompt hello which you're not supposed to be able to do and now let's run it syntax error in 10 and if we type help 
it'll actually tell us, it'll actually like show us the line and where in the line the error is. This next one is super handy. So we've got our program here and let's say we wanna add a line in between 10 and 20. So we'll just go 15, print world and we list it. It's inserted in between the two lines. But let's say we want it to go up uh, by nice neat tens again. So we can just type renumber and then when we list it, it goes up by tens. Although it starts at 100, or we can go like renumber 10, and now it will go up by tens. See, but it goes up by 100s by default. And I can define really whatever I want here. So I can go like renumber two, and now it goes up by twos, sorta. Okay, it didn't there. It just started at 2 and now it's 1222. I'm not entirely sure why it's doing that. Okay, future me here. I just realized that when you type renumber, the number that you put after it is the line number you want it to start at. So it will always go up by tens each time. What you're telling it with the renumber command is the line you want it to start at. So when I do like renumber 2 here, for example, it'll start at 2, but it will go up by tens each line. That's why it says 2, 10, 22. So no matter what number I put there, it will always go up by tens. That number is just like what I want it to start at. This next thing is called trace, and it's pretty cool. Just type trace to turn it on, and now let's run our program. As you can see, it's just going 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, and in this little box in the top corner here, and uh, what it's doing here is it's displaying the line number that is currently being executed. So this is pretty handy for debugging. Let's see, 10, 20, and 30, and yeah. Uh, this next command is similar. So here's a little program here, it's just an infinite loop, and it just increments x each iteration of the loop and it goes on forever. It prints x, and as you can see, it's just counting up. And the next command I'm going to show you is called step. So we can just type step, and then every time we run it, see it just says line 10, and by hitting the shift key, it increments one line at a time. See every time I hit shift, that goes up by another line. And every three times I hit shift, it prints out another number. And it just, it basically just advances one line at a time every time I hit shift. And I can turn this off by typing off. Now the window goes away and is now turned off. And typing off also works for turning off the uh, trace line too. So I've got a larger program loaded into memory. I'll just list it here. It's not super big. And normally if I scroll up, I can't scroll up in the program and see the lines before or line 35. But if I hit Control Q, I can actually scroll up. I can do the same thing with Control A to go down. I can scroll up and down without having to relist it again, which is super handy for uh, viewing program listings. And you wouldn't be able to do this normally on the VIC 20. We can also go Control L and it will erase all the characters after the cursor on a single line. Or we can go Control U to erase an entire line. Or Control N to clear the screen below the cursor. So, some really handy additions to the screen editor. So anyway, that's just about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Commodore VIC-20 Programmer's Aid cartridge. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.